Hey tasters, there are two camps when it comes to rosé. Some of us think of it as a wine strictly to be enjoyed in the summer. Many, however, love tasting rosé all year long. But did you know that rosé wine can be produced in a variety of ways? I live in Cyprus and here the sun is out all year long. So I'm headed to a winter barbecue today and I'm taking this bottle with me. The most popular method of rosé production is limited skin maceration. The colour of wine comes from the grape skins, not the juice. Skin contact or maceration is essential for any wine that is not white. After crushing the grapes, the juice is left to macerate with the skins so that colour, flavour compounds and tannins can be leached from the grape skins. This is exactly how red wines are made too. The difference is that in the case of rosé wine, skin contact is limited to just a few hours. In fact, maceration time for rosé wines usually lasts from 12 to 24 hours. Maceration can be as short as six hours, but rarely lasts more than 48 hours. It is the length of maceration that determines the color and flavor intensity of the final product. The longer the juice and skins are left to macerate, the deeper the tint of pink in the wine. At the end of the maceration, the rose-tinted juice is drawn off the grape skins and fermentation begins. This method is versatile and depending on the type of grapes and the length of skin contact, a variety of rosé wines can be produced. Another popular method of rosé production is the saunier method. This literally means to bleed. It involves bleeding off, and that is removing some of the juice from the must of a red wine. This helps concentrate the flavor and aroma compounds in the must, as well as deepening the color of the red wine. This method has been very popular in the wine regions of Bordeaux and Burgundy. However, the primary goal of this method is to produce a superior, more intense, red wine. Although it is perfectly possible to produce rich and even award-winning rosé wine using the Saunier method, some wine experts strongly object to its use in rosé wine production. For example, in 2012, François Milot, president of the Provence Wine Council, made the case that rosé wines made using the Saunier method are not true rosés because the vintner is focused on the red wine rather than the rosé. The third method is controversial. It's called blending. Winemaking is not as simple as watercolors. So although blending a little red wine into white wine would give you pink wine, this is not deemed good enough to be called the rosé, at least not in the European Union. In fact, blending wines post-fermentation is strictly prohibited. If the wines in question fall in the PDO or protected designation of origin category, winemakers and wine lovers in the EU feel very strongly about this. In 2009, the European Union caused an outcry by proposing a legislation change that would allow winemakers to create a rosé wine by mixing red and white wines post-fermentation. This proposal was received with strong protests all over France, but most notably in Provence, where the vast majority of wine produced is rosé. Strong objections were also raised in Italy, where rosato is very popular. The proposed legislation change was abandoned. There is one notable exception to the rule. When making rosé champagne, blending red and white wine post-fermentation is not only allowed, but recommended. Last and definitely least is the decolorization method. This method of producing rosé wine involves the extreme discolorization of red wine. This method involves using a purified form of charcoal that is capable of absorbing color and other flavor compounds from the wine at a high rate. The red wine 
is passed through a system of charcoal filters until the desirable shade of pink is achieved. This method is useful if a winemaker is stuck with a red wine that won't sell. However, as you can imagine, this method does not just discolor the wine, it also indiscriminately strips off the color, flavors, aromas, and character. This method is never used in the production of a good quality rosé wine. Right guys, I'm nearly at my friend's house. I'm gonna have to let you go now. I hope you've enjoyed the video, tasters. Had you heard of all these rosé wine making methods before? Comment below and let me know. Or just leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite rosé wine is. Leave a thumbs up and share this video with a friend. Cheers, everybody. Have you subscribed yet? Go on, hit the red button below. Oh,